darlings, I'm Brian, and you are watching The Brian Darling Show. I am so excited. This is the launch of our second season. Actually, just about a year ago today is when I did my first show, and we're so organic here. We're the grassiest of grassroots show here on YouTube, and you can find me at BrianDarling.com. And subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Twitter and Facebook, and you'll find everything Brian Darling. Very easy to remember. And the Brian Darling Show is viewed in over 125 countries. Isn't that amazing? YouTube really takes us all over the world. So I'm really excited about today's guest. We, you know, we hit the high waves here on the Brian Darling Show, and this today is the highest wave yet. You never know what, who you're going to find right here on the Brian Darling Show. So I'm so thrilled to introduce to you a very special woman. Uh, back in 2006, I found myself sitting in my easy chair, clicking on the TV, not really doing anything, and I, I uh, tuned into ABC, turned on The View, and I met this amazing woman right on TV. Her smile drew me in, her sparkling personality, quick wit, and hilarious commentary made me an instant fan. And it's my pleasure to welcome to the Brian Darling Show the amazing Sherry Shepard. Yay! Yay! Hey, Brian, how are you? I am so wonderful. How are you today, Sherry? Oh, I'm so great. I'm tweeting right now to tell people to come on to um, talk to us. Oh, gosh. Now, you've got 600 and some odd thousand Twitter followers. I have 226, but my darlings are very loyal. So 226 strong is what I should say. And I'm only not, I'm only, I'm not ignoring you. I'm just, I'm, because I, every time I type in Brian, it's, it puts in brain, which you are. This is true. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to look up at you in three seconds. Questions. Now. <laughs> oh, no. Well, you really never know what you're going to get on this show. So, uh, Sherry, you are such a busy lady. In addition to all those hot topics, you're the host of the Newlywed Game. Love that show. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, someday I'll, maybe someday I'll be a newlywed. You never know. Yes. And, of course, you're a very successful stand-up comedian best-selling author, we're going to hear about what you're up to there, well, professional dancer, super <laughs> mom. Yes. Oh, that lovely little Jeffrey, he's just growing up right before our eyes. Thank you so much for sharing uh, uh, your, your Sal and Jeffrey and, and all your friends with us. I just can't get enough of the view. I'm a super fan. Oh, thank you. So am I. I'm a super employee. Is that, now, is that a good, good word? Well, I got to tell you, you're sitting there next to the the iconic Barbara Walters, and, and and oh, she's just taken all of you under her wing over the over the years. The View is such an amazing show; it's always fresh and new. And I got to tell you, it's not just housewives, Sherry, watching the show. You've got a lot of darlings. <laughs> I know I have all of my friends call me afterwards. It, every kind of person, not just women. I have all, all my friends who are men call me. I have people who are, you know, doctors who call me, and they all have a comment on something that I did that morning. Well, I just cannot stop looking at your smile. You're so in, you have such an infectious smile, and I gotta tell you, you really came into my, now I'm not sure you know this, but you really came into my life as a, at a moment where I needed to laugh. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I turned on the TV, Sherry, and you made me laugh. And I, I had never really watched The View too much. I mean, I've tuned in on you know, some of the higher you know, Star Jones and some of the more controversial moments over the years. Yeah. But that summer of 2006 was really a groundbreaking year for you. I think I caught probably your first appearance, guest appearance on The View, and I fell in love with you instantly, and you know what I did? I wrote a letter to Barbara Walters. Oh, my gosh. What did the letter say? It's the God honest truth. I said, Bar Miss Walters, I absolutely love this woman. You have to keep her on the show. Oh, my gosh. I think that probably was the letter that she always referred to when she was wondering, do I need to get rid of this girl? <laughs> Well, let me tell you, darlings, um, 
if you ever get to New York, I, I go down and see the view. They have a yeah. really nice little studio in Manhattan, and the ladies are so friendly during the commercials. They come and talk to you and snap pictures with you. And I actually got to come down and see the view also. It is. It's. I think it's really when people. It's so different from seeing it on TV. And then when you come down and you're in the studio audience, you see that it's actually very small, and you see how quick things go because you're screaming at the TV why didn't you say this and how come you didn't talk about this and it goes so <clears throat> excuse me so quickly but we love going into the audience and talking to people I actually fell off the stage today during the audience oh my gosh break. well I was so nervous preparing for this show I haven't I haven't watched today's show yet so oh yeah no you don't see it this is one of the things you get during the commercial break I was coming off the stage and my, I, because I wear six inch heels and it caught on the stage and I fell and Barbara walks over to me. She says, next time grab onto me. And I go, well, what's it going to look like if I fall? Because I'm bringing you down with me. That's, oh, that, no. that'll look good. Well, that's why they put that railing up there, Sherry. You're supposed to use the railing. You can't be cute. <laughs> you can't be cute with six inch heels and use the railing. It doesn't go together. <laughs> now, now level with us, Sherry. Is it? Are those shoes really comfortable, or do you just wear them on the show and then take them off right after? No, they're very comfortable. I love them. Oh my gosh, I love those big six-inch heels. Oh my gosh, yes, they are so comfortable. Well, they are so flattering, and I got to tell you, you are looking good, girl. Thank you. I have lost. Uh, let me see, thirty-six pounds, and Is about my waist was uh, forty-one inches. And oh, no, no, excuse me. My waist was 39 inches, and it went down to 31 inches. So I lost eight inches in my waist. If you can't see, but my boobs—I don't know—my boobs are kind of sagging underneath my workout clothes. So I lost a lot of weight in my boobs. So I'm well, trying. Well, you just look so amazing, and you know we have a lot in common. We both have a birthday coming up. Our birthdays are seven days apart. So when is yours? The twenty. When is yours? The eleventh. I'm, I'm April fifteenth. I'm a tax baby. Oh my gosh! You were born. Your parents were happy. Oh yes, and you're coming up on the. Can I say the date? Yes, on the twenty second. Twenty second, April twenty second. We're both going to be. Oh, that's right. We have the same birthday. That's oh, that's going to be a fun party. Well, the great thing about it is, as I get older and age. With his birthday being the same date as mine, everybody forgets about me, and they focus on Jeffrey, which is just fine with me. Well, you are such a super mom, and you're doing all of these things. I can't imagine. I mean, what's it like getting up at wee hours of the morning? Oh, putting man. Your, putting your kid in school. I mean, what if you're having a really bad, oh, awful morning? You've got to walk on stage and, and put your life out there in front of the world. What's that like? Well, we moved from the city to New Jersey, so we're pretty far out. So I have to get up. I used to be, when I lived in Harlem, I could get up. You know, we, had, we have to be at work at 9 o'clock. My son has to be at school at 8.30. So I literally could get up at 7.30, but now I have to get up at 5 in the morning. So oh, I my up goodness. So I get up at 5.00 in the morning I, it takes me an hour I gotta do my prayer and meditation and it take you know I'm, I'm sitting on the can for like 30 minutes trying to wake up so I just I need time for me and then I gotta wake up Jeffrey we have to be out of the house by 7 in the morning and we're stuck in rush hour traffic for about an hour and 45 minutes so well, I watch out for those traffic cones on the George Washington Bridge oh I'm just saying yeah, the traffic cones that maybe Christy might have put there. Who knows? Just, just drive right around those cones. You know, they don't really yeah. mean anything. <laughs> no, but don't we, worry about we, that. Uh, I get Jeffrey into school by 8.30, and then I get here, so i got about 20 minutes. Our, our Hot Topics meeting starts at 9 o'clock. So I've already been up for four hours, so it starts at 9 o'clock. We, we get a research packet with about 60 uh, topics. we got about 20 political topics. 20 human interest stories, 20 celebrity stories, and we start just kind of thumbing through them, all of the, all of, I start to say all the contestants, all of the ladies, and, you know, it was something that we're passionate about, like, everybody was like, oh my God, look at number 19, there's a cheerleader who moved out of her parents' house, and now she's suing for... Can you believe that? Did you hear that one? 
Yeah, we what, all. Is, what is that all about? When the kid turns 16 nowadays, they hold their hand out and they want a new car and a set of car keys. You know what I think it is, Brian? Don't you think a lot of these kids today, they feel a sense of entitlement that we didn't have? We were really trained to work hard, and we were we were also taught that when you get 18, you you got to you gotta work. And I think yeah, these absolutely. kids expect a lot of stuff. And this woman, she's doing great in school, but she didn't want to abide by her parents' rules, so she moved out at 18, but sued for her parents to pay the rest of her high school tuition and college. Can you yeah. believe it? I thought that took a lot of cojones. Now, Sherry, you and I are Midwest, uh, Midwest yes. born and bred. You're a Chicago girl. I'm a Milwaukee boy. Yes. So, yeah, we did, I think, uh, have quite, you know, those Midwest values. I think there's some truth to that. Um, I see a lot of that in uh, your co-host, Jenny, also. I'm yes, it's really... We, yeah, Jenny's from Chicago too. And by the way, Milwaukee. We were in Chicago. We used to go to we used to go to um, Wisconsin because you could drink earlier. Yes, <laughs> good. And so yes. we cross we would cross that Milwaukee line so we could get something to drink. My parents still don't know I used to do that, oh. but I, we love Milwaukee. But you know what? Yeah, we were taught to really work hard, and and my parents were really big on if you don't want to follow the rules of this house, you're very welcome to get out and make your own way. My mom actually did put me out at 18 and I had to find a way to make ends meet. I ne it never crossed my mind to sue my mother and my father for money. Yeah, that's, uh, I, oh boy, I don't know about that one. Now you're out in California, you're working in Beverly Hills in a law office. Uh -huh. Now I work in an accounting office in Beverly Hills and I never left. I'm still there. Yeah, I was a legal secretary in Beverly Hills. Irvin Cohen and Jessup was my firm in Beverly Hills. Right across the street from my office. How about that? Oh, you're in the 9400s, aren't you? Yeah. You know there's a Pinkberry right on the corner of Beverly, right over there, that Pinkberry? I do. I've been there. And there's an island. That was, I'm telling you, as a legal secretary, that was all my stomping grounds over there to go get something to eat. I'm all about oh. food. I don't know where anything else is, but I know where the food places are. Well, South Beverly Drive, darlings, is the place to be. Let me tell you that. That is. So with all of these things that you're doing, Sherry, you must really have to have, I talk a lot about on this show about having a very strong team of people around you. And one of the questions, I'm, I'm a celebrity business manager, so people like you are my clients. So if I was to ask you, Sherry, what does your business manager do for you? How would you answer that question? Oh, wow. You know, so much. I actually just signed with a new business manager probably about six or seven months ago. But literally a business manager, when you're at a certain point, a certain level, and you're bringing in uh, finances, they can really help you keep track of all of your finances. They help you if you are in debt like I was when I was a legal secretary. I was in a religion that taught that the world was going to end. So because I thought the world was going to end, I never paid any of my bills because I thought, well, if the world's going to end, I might as well go shopping. Consequently, I was about twenty or $30,000 in debt. So what a business manager helped me do was paid all of my bills, prioritized everything because I wasn't paying them, and got all of the levies off of my account, paid all of the bills, got me out of debt, got my credit, my credit rating back up, helped me buy property, help me invest my money into different stocks, um, help me buy rental property. If the business manager always looks at your business as far as finances and helps you future, you know, so you can project into the future, depending on if you want to save a lot of money, if you want to get your retirement together, if you want to have your kids' college fund together, if you want to, you know, if you want to be able to buy 12 or 13 cars. They tell you how much money you can't be spending so you can get a lot of cars. They really keep your money together. If you're the type of person you're not great with your funds and your finances, which I was one of those people, uh, a business manager was invaluable to me and helped me learn how to balance a checkbook. I didn't know how to do that. Well, I would, get, I would get checks in and just keep them on my dresser. Sure. Well, it's uh, uh, darlings. Uh, the the entertainment business it really is kind of a small family, and it, it, it's a team. And I'm just at a different. A, a part of the team, but let me tell you, um, Sherry's got, and, and many celebrities, they have income coming in from all different places. Sherry, you have a wig line. Oh, and I just. This is, a, 
the, uh, not to interrupt you, but again, mm. what a business manager does that's invaluable is you, you're so you hit the nail on the head. When you have different streams and forms of income coming in, sometimes it's easy to lose track. If I'm doing stand up five times, it, if I've gone out of town five times in three months, those are five different checks coming through. Then I've got money coming through from the books that I've sold. Now I've got a wig line. I've got money coming through from QVC. You got it, you got it coming through. And then you got to keep track of how many wigs are being sold. Are you, you know, your business manager keeps track and makes sure that people aren't cheating you because they, you know, they can say to me, you know what, you only sold 13 wigs. And I'm going, but wait a minute. I see a whole bunch of people in Harlem wearing my wig. <laughs> so they keep track of that. They keep track of, I did beauty shop about 10 years ago, but I still have residual checks coming in from beauty shop that they keep track of. I, I'm not, a, you know, I don't know when, when my everybody loves Raymond checks are coming in. I, I did Jamie Foxx. You got, so you have money coming in. They also help you in negotiation mm -hmm. when you do something else. So you hopefully you get the right business manager so you don't look up in you know when you want to retire and they tell you you're broke steve harvey just said to us he came on the view and said he was 20 million dollars in debt i can't even imagine that amount of money yeah but that's very hard when somebody's not you're not filing your tax returns so a business manager is invaluable for keeping everything together well and as as a talented performer entrepreneur writer it's your job to earn the money. It's my job to keep it safe, make sure it stays in your pocket and doesn't go into someone else's, that it's not supposed uh, People just come out of the woodwork in this business. It, yeah, it's it's up amazing. To you. It's up to you to tell me, Sherry, that boyfriend that you got from prison, you got to stop sending him so much money. You can't afford it. It's your job to tell me, you know what, you bought too many shoes this month, Sherry. Uh, oh, yes. You need a place Step to live. Step away from the Jimmy Choo counter. Step away from the Jimmy <laughs> I mean, literally, business managers are so important. When I, w when I started doing The View, I was going through a very nasty, expensive divorce and custody battle. And mo a lot of people don't know the first two years I was doing The View, I was flat broke because I had spent all of my money fighting for custody of my son Jeffrey, plus paying attorney's fees. That stuff adds up. And my business manager, I remember he flew out and he sat on the couch and he said, you have no more money. And I said, how can I have no more money? He said, you spent it all in this divorce. And when I did the newlywed game, all of my money that I made from the newlywed game paid off all the attorneys. I had a sitcom on Lifetime. All of that money paid off. You know, I got my retirement. I started building my nest egg back up. So, it, you know, people think that when they see you on TV, oh, my gosh, you're making all this money. And that's why a lot of people go broke. They think, oh, you're making this amount of money. What they don't understand is you have to pay commission to an agent, to a business manager, to a lawyer, to um, a regular manager, to a publicist. You have a lot of people that are taking commission. And your business manager is keeping track of all of that and letting you know, yes, you got a big check, but you, you, you're only getting a third of this money. Everybody else has got to well, get paid. It's a little more than that. Well, it's a little more than that. I'm, 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 throwing out, that. This, I'm throwing this out of the side of my neck like a figure, but they're letting you know, a, a good business manager, that you're not, this number that you have here, you can't live off of that because that's not all yours. It's Uncle Sam. And it's mm -hmm. about four or five other people on your team. They have to get paid too. Well, you know, Sherry, there's no emotion in, in what I do professionally. It's really my job to take care and watch over all of those things so you can go out on stage and knock them dead and, and, and kill those hot topics every day. So, <laughs> it, you know, but it's funny. People ask me that question obviously all the time, and it's really kind of hard to answer, but it's so important it's so important and and you are just such a great example because you know now that you kind of, you're sort of in the groove now you're losing weight um, all these opportunities are coming up for you that is a direct direct result of your having a good team around you and, yeah. and it, thanks for sharing that um, it is I think it's really uh, you have to have the right people you know and I think People are not aware of that when you say team, what a team is. You got an agent 
who gets the jobs and you got to go out and audition for these jobs. They get you the opportunities. You have a regular manager who kind of oversees your entire career and, and projects into the future of things that you want to do. You have a publicist who gets your name out there who works with you on your brand a lawyer they gotta look over contracts I forgot about the lawyer that looks <laughs> over your contract and you got your business manager who goes now I gotta make sure all of this the money is right <laughs> well let's talk a little bit about your book um, one of the and that's it's a very personal story that that you've shared and and so many millions of people are are benefiting from this information. Tell us a little bit about Plan D and how and how you uh, were inspired to write that book. Plan D, that is a very personal book for me. I wrote that really as an homage to my mother. And my mother Laverne had type two diabetes. But hold on, that's an announcement. Okay, my mother had type two diabetes, and she passed away at the age of forty one, which is pretty young because she didn't take care of herself and I don't think she really knew a lot about what diabetes did to your body internally so mm -hmm. she passed away we had to make the, the painful decision to take her off life support because she had gone into a coma she was looking at amputations and she left three very very young girls that my youngest sister was 15 at the time and we kinda had to find our own way and I ignored the signs because diabetes runs in my family pretty much everybody I call my family the diabetes hall of fame because so oh. many people in my family have diabetes we are used to it we are used to seeing my uncle come up to the table on Christmas and get macaroni and cheese and sweet potatoes and fried mm. this and you know apple pie and peach cobbler then he goes in a corner and, and he just goes to sleep yeah. I thought that was normal but now I know his blood sugar is going crazy and he's gonna get something amputated if he doesn't take care of himself but I ignored the signs for so long that I had of being I was be I was told all the time I was pre-diabetic and all pre-diabetic meant to me was you don't have diabetes yet so that means you can mm -hmm. eat pancakes and sausage and bacon and it got to the point where I couldn't ignore the signs anymore and they told me I had diabetes and I still went and ate five pancakes and bacon and sausage and dripping with butter and syrup but literally Brian I got a vision and I, you know, and I'm very spiritual, so I don't force mm -hmm. my beliefs on anybody. But I, be God talks to you. I believe that. And I got a vision of my son at five years old, clutching his teddy bear, crying, because he was trying to figure out where heaven was, because that everybody told him that's where mommy was. Aww. He was by himself in a room, and that vision made me snap my head up and say, if you don't get your life together, you're going to die, and you're going to do to Jeffrey what your mom did to you. And uh, my son has special needs, and I'm thinking, who's going to take care of my baby? And that is what was the impetus <clears throat> for me to get it together. And then I got hired on The View like a few weeks before I got my diabetes diagnosis. So I had to learn how to get a team in place of doctors to help me with the diabetes and how to conquer that and get my blood sugar level. So it's, it's, I wrote this book because I know that people get really scared when they feel these symptoms they don't want to go to the doctor they're scared of what the doctor is gonna say but you can manage your diabetes if you have type 1 or type 2 you can manage it you may need to have it you know take insulin or type 2 which is what I have it's a lifestyle change eating and exercise so you know you just have to you have to change your life and that's what I had to learn to do because I wanted to be here to see my son get his degree. I want to be here to give my daughter-in-law some problems. Sure, and, so, and, and you did that with all of these other things going on in your life. You were able to do that. So darlings, this is not something that is rocket science. Anybody can do this. And read Sherry's book. Talk to, and, and, and after you've read the book, share it with one of your friends. Talk to your friends about it. Um, you, you're a couple clicks away from, from downloading. You can go to BrianDarling.com. I've got links on there. Now, Sherry, if they go to your website, you'll send them an autograph book I, I just read last week. Yes, they can get an autograph book 
from me and I put something inspirational in the front because really I talk about I wrote the book because I wanted to take the fear out of diabetes I wanted people to know you know I, some people when they get their diagnosis or they hear pre-diabetes they go what do I need to do what a, oh my gosh and, and you start freaking out and I go no don't freak out here's a lot of the foods that you can eat you can still eat a lot of food you just have to change the way you look at the food you have to look at alternatives to the way you eat you know and it's it's a it's a life adjustment but you feel good i tweeted this morning i said if anybody would have told me that i would be sitting here eating a grapefruit and oh. a protein shake i would have laughed <laughs> normally my breakfast was scrambled eggs dripping with american cheese and six mm -hmm. slices of bacon and three sausage patties with two two buttered uh, pieces of toast with with uh, strawberry jam that's oh, what i goodness. normally would eat but then I didn't feel good and my blood mm -hmm. sugar was going crazy and I was irritable and I had no energy so now I'm eating this grapefruit and I'm eating this protein shake with 30 grams of protein I am like jumping off the chair with energy I feel good a lot of people don't realize how good it feels to feel good we're so used to feeling bad and that becomes our normal I want people oh, yeah. to feel good and and be able to look at their kids and be present well, I, you know, I've had a, a weight loss journey of my own. Now, yes. my story isn't exactly as exciting or inspiring, I don't think, as yours. But maybe in a different way. I was going yeah. back to a, I was going back to a 30-year high school reunion last summer, in Milwaukee. Uh huh. And I was, you know, I'm 39 and holding now, so I'm, you know, packing on, you know, just age weight. And I thought I am not going to show up at this reunion, you know, a big boy. So right. I. I found a little app called Lose It. Yes, I know about yeah. that app. And it's free. You don't have to pay for it. And what you can go into the grocery store and scan on your little smartphone. It'll tell you how many calories are in what whatever you're eating. And you log your food. And I did that for a couple of months. And I also lost 40 pounds. So there's a lot of different ways that we can do this. And, and just look at Sherry. She's a perfect example, and I got to tell you, it landed her a, a, a role on Dancing with the Stars. Now we're almost out of time, but what do you think that now? Dancing with the Stars, my other favorite show, is is coming up, uh, premiering next week. What do you think about the new cast? You know, it's very interesting to see this new cast. I mean, you got Billy D. Williams, who I think has a certain amount of swagger, but I think he's out of his. This, he's stepping out of his comfort zone. Then mm -hmm. you got two gold Olympic dancers on ice who are doing Dancing with the Stars. So a lot of people argue, does that give them a leg up because they're dancers? Yes, it's hard to dance. It's an adjustment taking dancing from the ice and putting it on, on a hardwood floor. But with Dancing with the Stars, a lot of that is technical stuff, which mm -hmm. they've already learned. They've learned to dance. So they know all of that. You don't have to do the one, two, three, four, one, two, three. They know that. Mm -hmm. Then you got somebody like Nene Leakes. Oh, uh, Nene, I I think she might. I think she might go deep into the season. I'm. I have. I agree. Nene Leakes. Mm -hmm. I agree. And Nene, you know what? Nene used to be a stripper, so she's got a leg up on the competition because when you're when you're a stripper. You are dancing for money. So you've got to make those men want to give you money, which means your dance moves have got to be on point. So I think Nene is going to go far. I And then I think the, the viewers get to switch up the competitors with the different pros. Yeah, that's the twist this year. That I know. Is the, twist. I, the, the competition will feature a new game-changing twist called the Switch Up. And this season, America will be given the power to vote and change celebrities and professional dance pairings. I don't even know what to. I don't even know. Let what me to tell you about. how hard that is, Brian. When you, my partner on Dancing with the Stars was Val Schmerkowski. You, you, you get into a relationship with your partner that is like a marriage. You start, especially when this is something that you've never done before. You start trusting them with everything. You're very vulnerable in front of them. You cry in front of them. You let your guard down. This is why whenever 
a competitor will mess up, she will, she or he will look at their partner and go, I'm so sorry. It's so mm -hmm. dysfunctional, the relationship. But you don't want to let them down. And once you've developed that groove, they know how to correct. Half the time, the competitor is dancing the wrong way, but the pro knows how to adjust oh, themselves yeah. to make you look good. Now, when you switch it up all of a sudden, you've got to redevelop that with the person in about five hours. It's really difficult mm -hmm. to do, and, and you've got to trust. And you have to do it in six-inch heels. And you have to look like a million bucks in front of millions of people live. And not let your boob come out the, <laughs> and, the blinged out dress. Do you understand? They put a microphone underneath your areola and they oh. tape it. And you're doing all this dancing and you you can feel it coming out. And you're like, uh-oh. But you still oh, got to no. count. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Well, I was lucky enough. Um, one of the I've been down to to the set uh, several times now, and I was lucky enough to to see your I call it your Tina Turner. You just channeled Tina Turner in that golden. Oh my gosh! I hope they have an All Stars. Hey, Dancing with the Stars. Hello. You know what I tell them, Brian? First of all, I got to tell you, I tell Dancing with the Stars all the time. They call me the closer because if there's anybody who's like on the fence about doing it, they'll say, call Sherry, and I tell them what an amazing experience you will have because I really think if you go into Dancing with the Stars with the right attitude, you'll come away with such a, such a life lesson. But um, I just say on Dancing with the Stars, I always tell them, you guys shouldn't have an all-star where you have the people who almost won. Have an all-star um, reunion where it's like people who were voted off in the fourth week or the fifth week because they still got a journey, i.e. Sherry Shepard. Yeah, you you went off way too early on that I season. I know. It just, oh, that it really bothered so me. Well, but you know I love it. Darlings? I love I loved everything about Dancing with the Stars. I would do it again in a heartbeat. It was the most amazing experience of my life. Well, I know I will see you in the audience sometime this season. They all Florence Henderson is always there, and it's really a who's who. And, darlings, if you get a chance, that's another show. If you're in Los Angeles and you can get tickets to this show, it's really nice. You know, everyone in the audience dresses up. You they don't dress up. We dress you know what, up. the thing with Dancing with the Stars is once you compete, you come away either hating it or loving it. And that's why you see so many competitors from former seasons back who are there all the time. You can't get enough of it. Literally, if I didn't live in New York, I would be there every week. I love it so much. But, you know, I, if, I don't, if I don't go to work, I don't get paid. We're not we're not on salary, so I got I I can't call in sick. Sure. Well, I like the I like the technical aspects. I mean, you you have to give up your cell phone. There's no phones or cameras or anything in there, and this is a live show. So I'm sitting in the audience, and I like to look at all the little technical things that go on behind the scenes. And you sit there, and there's twenty some odd professional dancers, and then there's the cast, some of which have never danced before. There's people with cameras running all over the place. The lighting in that studio, it just gets better and better and more amazing every year. And it's so professionally done from a you technical. Know, literally, you're sitting there in front of live, and you will. I would rehearse for eight, nine hours with Val six days a week. He let me have Sunday off. And I'd be sitting there, and your head is down, and you'd hear, Dancing the Jive is Sherry Shepard and her partner, Val Schmerkowski. And in my head, I'm going, oh, my gosh, I forgot all my steps. One, two, three, four. <laughs> it just would come because you've rehearsed and you've practiced so much. And, and your muscles would take over, not your mind. Well, honey, those calves, don't think we're not noticing those calves, girl. You got it going on. Sal, you better keep an eye on this on this gal. <laughs> I will tell him you said that. You better keep an eye. And... And, and and we're just we're so lucky to to uh, be able to enjoy. You're sharing the gift. You've been given the gift of of entertaining others and making us laugh. And Sherry, I just want to thank you so much for for taking a little time to to share your view with uh, the Brian Darling Show guests. And hey, will you come back again sometime and and say hi to me again? 
I absolutely will, Brad. Next time I come out there, we'll go do a pink berry run. I'll well, come we, to your neck of the woods. Well, we have we have to get a new photo now. I posted a photo from several years back uh, of Sherry and I. I, I was on the we view. We both were heavier. We both were heavier, so I'll do a before and after because we oh, we both look fabulous, girl. I know. We got to do like a spread. We, yes, absolutely. So, darlings, you can find Sherry's book at BrianDarling.com. Just click on the Sherry Shepherd link. You'll get right to her. Now, you've got a couple of stand-up dates coming up. Where where can we see you live on stage? Oh, let me see. I'm really excited because I'll be in Alabama this weekend, in Birmingham, Alabama, on March 21st and 22nd at the Star Dome Comedy Club. And then I'm opening for two gospel singers, Kirk Franklin and Tamla Mann, at Joy Fest. And that's in that's sometime in May, May 5th, uh, in uh, North Carolina and in Richmond, Virginia. And oh my gosh, I'm just I and I'm on QVC this weekend, this Sunday, selling my wigs in the afternoon. Oh gosh, you know we didn't even get to talk about the wigs, but we'll save that for another. We'll save that for another day. Absolutely. Well, Sherry, thank you so much. It has been a pleasure. I love you dearly. The pleasure's all mine. The love back at you. And you just you just have a great time, and you enjoy the view, and we'll in, keep enjoying you. All right, mwah. Thank you so much. See you later. Oh, darlings, I am so, so excited. I've been waiting so long uh, to bring Sherry Shepard right here on the Brian Darling Show and introduce her to you. And, you know, you can really see her just about everywhere. So tune in to The View on ABC and click on SherryShepard.com and check out her book, Plan D. And if she's appearing in your city, hey, go buy a ticket, have a few laughs, and and just have a good time. So, darlings, we've come to the end of another Brian Darling show. And we're hitting those high waves every show. So I just want to thank you very much for watching, and have a great day. <laughs>